Today on the pendulum, it's ladies' night. <laughs> Can't even stop that. Today's on the spot comic reviews, because we've got some. We do. It's what we're known for in certain circles. That's right. Both feature small circles. The ladies still. of Marvel comics. You made it sound creepy. Why? The ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you read, Jeff? All right, I read uh, Black Widow number four. Have you been reading this book? Negative. Ooh. Even though it's by Phil Noto, I really want to read it, but yeah. Anyways, it's uh, it's been a great series so far. It's uh, all been standalone issues. This huh. this uh, issue as well is pretty much a standalone, although I think it's a, at least a two-parter or a three, even if they stretch it out some more. But so not a standalone. Well, no, not this particular one. But it almost is, because it, you know, it has a definite but in another beginning, way, middle, isn't. and end. So, if you never read the book after, you would be just fine. Oh, okay. So, there you go. But anyways, um, it's pretty good. It features a new villain called Molot, who's a uh, gigantic Russian And there, something he's a gigantic Russian. Or other. Yeah, I don't know if he's a gangster or what. They never really explain that. He's working for somebody who they don't show, so that's kind of a thing to look forward to, I guess, in future issues. He's also some kind of religious nut, because he's uh, always... He's a big dude. ...always quoting scripture and or just talking God speak or something, I don't know. So... <laughs> talking God speak. Uh, <laughs> that's right. It's going to be my Christian cover band. <laughs> So the artwork by Phil Noto, like you just mentioned, it's fantastic. This guy can draw the pants off anyone else, I must say. He's, uh, lots of action. He makes her look fantastic, which is great, because she's, you know, she's a good-looking dame. Good-looking dame. And we circled back around. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> Anyways, it's a good book. I really like Nathan Edmondson's writing. He's done some good image books, which I can't remember at the moment because my head's too full of books. So I do recommend you pick it up. It's uh, really, really good. You don't have to read the three issues before this to understand anything, which is great because mm -hmm. they are standalone issues. All you have to know is if you have any inkling who Black Widow is, you'll understand this book. Nice. I like, so, I like the Black Widow. So I don't think I've ever read a solo title of hers outside like a couple of minis. Yeah, the minis were good. Yeah. You had that trade, don't you? I do. Yes, you do. Which I gave to you. You did. So check it out. I give this one uh, probably about a four point five out of five. It's pretty darn good. Nice. Pretty good. Nice. So, what female Marvel characters book did you read today? Better. Um, <laughs> never ever picked up a single issue of her series before. I went with Captain Marvel, number one, new number oh. one, new, new number one, all about number one. That's ones. right, there's a number one this week. Number one, all time enough. number ones, every week, number ones, coming at you. I think, right. I think Marvel's plan is to have a new number one like every week for like a month. It's quite possible. Because they're on two weeks in a row now. Um, yeah, I, I like Carol Danvers, uh, I kind of like how she's uh, turned into Captain Marvel, I loved her, her uh -huh. role doing Infinity, so I thought... You know what? Not usually one of my books. Just grabbed it off the shelf because I actually I really like the cover. The cover really drew me in. The cover's pretty it's cool. Your classic superhero shot, dead on shot of the of, uh, character looking right at the cover. Off the cover, she's like pulling the glove of her suit on, and it is such a badass suit. Yeah. If and when uh, Captain Marvel, I'm hoping it's going to be Captain Marvel as Danvers shows up in the film because mm -hmm. it's going to be easier for her to be in there and another female character. Oh yeah. There is no reason why her costume wouldn't work perfectly on film. I know. It's it's like, awesome. It's not overly complicated. You could just make it a textured leather suit or something. And it, I mean, even there's some shots in it where it looks like that's the type of fabric and material it is. It's a fantastic yeah. costume design. Now, for those who are not new to the character, like Gary is, that's the exact same costume she had last series. Yeah. And the last series, same writer, different artist, mm -hmm. but 
also fantastic. So yeah. pick it up in trades or back issues or whatever, digital, because it's great. And it's a good introduction to this series yeah. as well. And, like, her costume makes a good homage <coughs> to the original Captain Marvel, uh -huh. but it also adds part of her Carol Danvers. I do like how they've gotten rid of her mohawk. I thought that was ridiculous. Yeah. I uh, yeah. don't know if she still has that hooded helmet thing. Maybe it's just a space. She wears it sometimes, yeah. so I'm not sure. Maybe it's just when she's in space yeah, type of thing. possible. But uh, Carol Danvers is always kind of me struck to be Marvel's Hal Jordan. Yeah. More so than Richard yeah, that's Ryder. That's a good analogy. Yeah. She's a pilot, kind of cocky, brass, uh, like sure of herself and everything, mm -hmm. which is cool for a character like this in the Marvel Universe, especially now with with what they're doing with her there they're basically uh tony stark comes up with an idea to have an avengers presence in space and uh they're gonna have like a rotating presence of avengers in space hanging with the guardians getting intel and uh, he kind of screws around with carol and has her basically kind of lies to her and says he wants brody to go when he knows full well she wants to do it so it ends up uh she ends up taking the gig i had no idea that Danvers and Bodhi are in a relationship. That's new. Yeah. And I did not know that Carol Danvers also lives in the Statue of Liberty. That is also new to me, actually. I don't recall that. Because the panel here is the residence of Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, New York City. And then there's the Statue of Liberty, which she <laughs> is inside with a furniture set up. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of continuity things going on in this issue I'm not quite sure of. Iron Man is in the wrong armor. It's in a yellow and gold instead of his black and gold. Yeah. A little odd. Uh, but Tony being a dick as usual, uh, kind of uh, kind of funny to see the the smarmy side of Tony Stark. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, for like I said, the first issue I've picked up of Captain Marvel, well, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel in a long time ever, I think. I enjoy it. It's got some cool outer space, uh, different planet stuff. They're on some type of, I think, uh, property seizure or uh, purchase by or something for illegal contrabands, and we got some Spartax guys as well in here. But uh, cool little, uh, cool little issue. I really enjoyed it. The art is really nice. Uh, got some guest stars by some other Avengers, so it's kind of cool. And uh, I like maybe where this series is going. Uh, taking Carol into space, having her be kind of the first uh, Avenger and in rotating in space there. And uh, I like where this is going. Uh, add some cool stuff to Carol Danvers as a character. And at the end of the book, they've got like her little sidekick, apparently. I'm not sure who this girl is, but she looks like she's like eight years old. And they have the origin of Captain Marvel, and it's like a kid's <laughs> drawing. And it's four panels, and it just sums up her origin in four little kid crayon-drawn panels. That's and it's kind of cool. cute and funny. Yeah. I really like it. So, um, you know what? Uh, recommended? I'm definitely recommending. I'm actually going to give this book a solid five out of five. I really enjoyed it. That's it's good. got some nice writing. The art is really nice. Um, if you're not super familiar with Carol Danvers, I mean, I've read her in Avengers books for a while, never on her yeah. solo. Uh, this would be a great way to break into the character. <clears throat> Even if you've never read her before as well, I think it would be a cool way to get yourself introduced. And as Jeff said, pick up the trades from her previous uh, series, that yeah. volume, just for a little bit of backstory here. But they might be calling references back to that later on in the series. Uh, they might be. Yeah. Overall, but... really enjoyed it. Uh, fantastic book. Um, Will you buy number two? Probably, I probably will. Uh, I do like me my outer space stuff with her heading off into space to do some adventuring. Maybe, uh, I think she is joining the Guardians with Venom as well, isn't she, coming up? Possibly. I think I remember seeing a cover soliciting They're Guardians. in that middle of that trilogy in gray right now. Yeah, so. I remember, I th I'm pretty sure that was a solicit for a couple months back for Venom and yeah. uh, Captain Marvel joining the Guardians. So, uh, yeah, I'd probably pick up number two. I'm really enjoying this, and uh, I look forward to seeing where the series goes from here. Cool. And there is a thing, like, you look at that, she looks a lot like Katie Sackhoff on this cover. Not really. To me, she does. To me, it looks a bit like Katie Sackhoff. Which... Those colored lenses. No. Yep. I'm thinking, like, there was some rumors going on that she might be playing Danvers. Or yeah. Or talks. We'll see I what happens. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think it'd be good. I think she'd be a good fit for Danvers. I don't think she would at all, actually. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. She's okay in Longmire. She wasn't that great in Battlestar. Towards the end, she kind of—I think it was more the, the the character writing than her yeah, performance of it. Uh, I don't know. I didn't care. And Michael Douglas is Hank Pym. I can definitely take. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Starbuck is uh, Danvers. Yeah. I don't know how that's gonna. <clears throat> so uh, this week's trade reviews. I'm not gonna do anything I mentioned last week. Blasphemy! Just because you didn't read them. Yeah, I didn't read it, and I just. Uh, 
I don't know. You had to be kind of in the mood to read those particular books. Um, I did you not get in the mood. You I made a finish, promise to our uh, audience. Quantum and Woody. Just I don't know. I just didn't, and I haven't even started Satellite Sam. But you got to be in the mood for that particular one. It's uh, a very strange genre-looking book. So. You're at work for eight hours a day. Yes, I am. Plenty of time to read. I know exactly. But I did read uh, two other ones. So uh, <clears throat> first one is not very good. Okay. It's called The Occultist, and uh, it's the first volume. The second volume is currently being published right now, monthly, by Dark Horse. And uh, it's written by Tim Seeley, and I can't remember who the artwork is by, but fantastic artist. He's, he must be fairly new, because I've never heard of mm -hmm. him. Anyways, the book's about this guy who gains these magical powers from this book. They just kind of absorb into him like the book itself almost or the text or whatever it is and he becomes this sword and uh this sword i guess battles whatever demons and bad guys and magical stuff i'm interested it's cool it looks cool the covers are gorgeous the artwork is gorgeous everything about the book looks fantastic it's the writing that's not very good it's very uh, stilted in some places, and it just doesn't flow very well. Uh, I did so the do characters a... are on stilts? Yes. No, I did a review on it on my uh, blog, which you can read more in depth, but basically it's like they wrote it in the old Marvel style, where you give the artist the plot, they draw it, then you fill in the dialogue later. Yeah. But it seems like when they fill filling in the dialogue, it just doesn't kind of fit or it's too abrupt in some places and it just there's no flow to it it just it's very uneven and it really makes for a poor reading experience mm. so i i thought the concept was cool and everything else about it is is great it has good potential to to be something and hopefully the second volume that's out right now is better but for the first volume i only give it a 2.5 out of 5 and that's basically just for the artwork and mm. the covers it's just not fantastic. <clears throat> On the other side, I read Jennifer Blood, Volume 1. Uh, Jeez. That was by Garth Ennis, and that was fantastic. It was just the greatest, greatest fun little story. It really seemed like Ennis, Ennis was having fun with it. It's like kind of like a cross between Desperate Housewives and Death Wish with Charles Bronson. Oh, my God. So... It, Take Terry I don't even Hatcher. know how those would work. Yeah, I know. You take Terry Hatcher and you mix her with Charles Bronson's Paul Kersey character, and uh, that's kind of what you get. This house mom who's uh, out to right her wrongs done her in the past by her former family, who are all a bunch of gangsters and whatever mm -hmm. else. So she's looking to take them all out, and uh, does a pretty good job of it. Nice. The only downside of that particular mini, well... It's an ongoing series, but that first arc, that first trade paperback, was the artwork, which was the opposite of The Occultist. It was very uneven, where the writing was very good. Hmm. <clears throat> Only because they had four different artists in six issues. Yeesh. Too many. Too many. Yeah. So the first two well. issues look all right, then it kind of switches to the next artist, and then it looks all right again for a bit, and then they switch to the next artist, and then the next, you know, just... Hmm. It's too much. Now... The writing is so good, you don't <clears throat> really notice it too much. But when you do notice it, you're like, oh, that's kind of, you know, weird. It's kind of off-putting a little bit. So, I would rather actually have good writing with all right art mm -hmm. than fantastic art with terrible writing. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can't get into the story, then that's... Just pictures. Yeah, it's just pictures, so... Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Blood, Garth Ennis, he only did the first six issues. A different writer took over the rest of the series, but the first six are gold. So I gave that a four out of five. It's pretty friggin' fantastic. It's really fun. It's still got Ennis's brutality and cursing and Yay! all that stuff in there. All the good stuff he's known for. And, uh, you, you can't really can't go wrong. I definitely recommend you pick this one up. So, Occultist? No. <laughs> Jennifer Blood? Yes. <laughs> and uh, that's it for trade reviews. Next week, though, I think I will look at Unity Volume 1, which came out this week. And maybe I'll do that Quantum and Woody one. We'll see. We'll see or maybe things, not. We'll see how things go. So. <laughs> 
Do you have a uh, brow razor for us? I do. Uh, my brow razor goes to uh, <coughs> Magneto, number one from last week. Ah, another number one. Another number one. Um, Magneto is one of my favorites. I love Magneto a lot. Um, he's been, you know, treading lightly on the side of the angels for a little while with uh, Summers and the Utopia X-Men during the Phoenix mm. Five sagas and everything. Uh, he's branching out on his own now for this number one series, and he's... They're kind of turning him, in my opinion, to be a little too heavy influenced from <clears throat> Magneto in the movies right now. Yeah, uh, you gotta knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not nuts about the bald look and the sleeveless uniform. Yeah, I don't like the sleeveless. But the uh, had uh, a, a filling ish incident uh, with a huh. character, so kind of the same little gag they pulled in first class. Pulls a guy's fillings out, mm -hmm. so that's all right. But then he replaces them. Oh yeah. With street signposts through the guy's face. I see. A little much for me. Huh. I yes, this guy was a badgin. He was, uh, you know, experimenting on mutants, doing all this stuff. So this is kind of Magneto's M.O. right now. Going after people that are hurting, killing, torturing mutants. You know, kind of always been his M.O. But yeah. now he's kind of, you know, he's not doing it with X-Men back up doing their missions or anything. He's going out on his own, basically killing people. And uh, I'm not a super big fan of how they, how his character is going right Grew now. Gruesomed it up a little bit. Yeah, like he rips <laughs> the guy's fillings out, lobs him out of a window, <laughs> and then throws um, street, signs. street signs down his face and out the back of his head. And it's not covered up. It's like a half a page. So they like, show it, show it. Yeah. Huh. Like, I'm hoping maybe he, he's not the one that did it, but in a flashback, it kind of gives the impression with the dialogue and how it's it being told. Probably that he was, did. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't like this Magneto. Eh, Magneto's always been extreme though. They just never really showed it like yeah. they have now. And I'm still not clear on why his powers got all fubarred after Phoenix Five. Well, they all have though, remember? Only Psychops the ones that and... got possessed. Like he was well, in proximity. Right. So there was a ton of mutants that were in proximity to those guys. Yeah. Like, is it because, like, <clears> there's <throat> some psychic connection with Emma and them, or what? But uh, I don't... Hard to say. Yeah. Uh, he did... Uh, one of my favorite things Magneto's ever done, any version of Magneto, is still from uh, Children of the Atom, the video game, uh -huh. where, like, he floats down off of his throne chair in Avalon and, like, forms his helmet out of, like, particles in the air. Kind of does the same gag in this issue, where he walks into a bank and just, like makes his black mask helmet yeah. thing out of things from around him. And I, anytime Magneto does that, it's just pretty badass. It is pretty cool. So, yeah, I was just... My I my brow was raised <clears throat> for a bad reason in this. Because I'm like, I don't want Magneto to be a killer. I don't want him... To, well, He if, is a killer. He is a killer, but this seems a little extreme. Was there a mature reader's like No, book? it's just a normal Marvel book. All right. Okay, then I can see the point for that. But if it had said mature readers, then you would do know. Do they even have those on there? Book. Yeah, they usually do. On the regular continuity yeah. 616 Marvel books? Yeah. Huh, I've yeah, never even noticed. So. Probably means I They have their them. rating system, you know. I don't know if there's... Yeah, down at the bottom. Probably. Oh, T. Yeah, it was probably teen. Yeah. But it was... It was for me, <clears throat> not from a content standpoint, like I've seen far worse in comics get yeah. like crossed. But from a character standpoint, from how he's been for the last little while, yeah, he's been a little, a little much. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not saying what is what he's doing is wrong, like punishing these people for their mistreatment and hate, like murder of mutants, basically. Mm -hmm. This seems a little too far for me for the yeah. character. Um, I might get the second issue. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. All right, cool. Speaking of number ones, there actually was, and uh, I think coming up or out last week, whatever. Uh, New Ultimates. Boo! Oh, okay, there's Jeff's opinion already <laughs> on record. Well, I've been a fan of the Ultimate Universe since its inception. Uh, yeah. Jeez, how long was that? Like twelve years ago? The Ultimate now? Universe was for people who couldn't understand the normal Marvel universe. No, it wasn't for people who couldn't understand it. It was for people. It was designed to be basically a, a soft reboot of Marvel for people that were just getting into it, who. For and pansies. That's what it was. Uh, <laughs> it, was a cha it was a cool example of like how they could do some different stories. I mean, originally uh, that's what it was for. 
uh, being 14, 15, how many so years on now, that kind of isn't the point of it, because they have all these nearly a decade and a half of continuity of their own. But uh, the whole point is to tell different types of stories that might not work in the ultimate, in the regular universe, things they couldn't really get away with. And yet it was all rehashed Wildstorm stories. That was the problem with it towards like the middle and the tail end of how many other reboots they've tried of this thing. It was basically, ah, hey, remember the lizard? Here's the ultimate for, it's pretty much the same character. Yeah, exactly. Looks different. exactly. But when they started taking more risks with the books that Jeff Loeb wasn't writing, <laughs> <laughs> Still, yeah. really, the blob eats people. Sure, why not? <laughs> like he eats the wasp. It's the dumbest thing I've ever so heard. So does of my the Age life. of Apocalypse blob. He also eats people. Yeah, but this was like graphically done. Like it was yeah. bad. It was brutal. But uh, I mean, I think they've gone through like three or four soft reboots of this and relaunches. I it's been more like six. Yeah. But I mean, it's still the intent. There is to tell stories that, you know. They can or won't in the 616 universe, which is a nice option for people. Uh, uh, and now with that new Ultimates, they've got a completely fresh, brand new lineup of uh, Ultimates, like their version of the Avengers, yeah. that doesn't have Thor, Cap, or Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man in that uh, universe now is running around with the Fantastic Four, which is a bizarre lineup in the Fantastic Four. It's like um, Machine, no, uh, Iron Man, Falcon, yeah. Invisible Woman, and. Um, Machine Man. That's a pretty weird FF lineup. Now, the thing I like, though, now about it is that they are not the standard status quo teams. Oh, exactly. That's how it should have been it, way Exactly. Back. Mix it the hell up. Because not you can. your original Thor Cap Iron Man. Yeah. Like, stuff. the new Ultimates has got the Miles uh, Morales Spider-Man, who probably is one of the best characters Marvel's invented in the last ten years. Uh, fantastic, fantastically written, great version of a Spider-Man character. I like the cool legacy aspect they built into this Ultimate version of Spider-Man. You've got uh, Ultimate Cloak and Dagger, uh, yeah. this new character, <clears throat> Bombshell, I think, and uh, the clone of Peter Parker, who is Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, mm -hmm. is taking over the role of Black Widow. I like her costume. Though. Yeah, really cool. It's, and again, it's not just a Black Widow costume. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same name, different character, different look, different attitude, so it's great. And the thing I love the most, a lot of people else have talked about this online, spot the white guy on this team. Yeah. It's fantastic. We're getting we're getting people on superhero teams that aren't blonde haired, blue eyed people. Like the entire world isn't just filled with pasty faced white guys like Jeff and I, to be honest. Excuse me? Oh sorry, bronzed gods like Jeff and I. Or just me. Not just you, sorry. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I'm the clear, pale one. But almost translucent. <laughs> I, I, I am. You can almost see the wall behind me. That's how pale I am. Oh, and it's in winter, boy. so it's even worse. But it's nice to see this, this cool aspect of diversity that our world actually is reflected in the books. Yeah. The 616 universe is kind of getting a little bit of that with the new Miss Marvel book. You know, it's not, it's not the everyday... It's not like... It's just one type of person we're getting in these books. It's interesting to read about all these different types of people because when it comes down to it, that's what fiction should be about. Different types of people, different experiences, different viewpoints. So it's great to have this diversity in books because that's the world that not only us, we live in, but the characters inhabit as well. Well, yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad they're expanding, but yeah, uh, it's still, I think... That line should just fold already. Enough said enough. When they were rumored to have it going all digital... I thought that might be an interesting way of doing it, because, like, digital books clearly taking off nowadays, and that might be a yeah. cool way to have that alternate they version They just keep done. beating a dead horse. So people can only go through so many reboots. True. And, like, they're, and the renumbering, like, Sp yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man's getting It's like every issue. two years. Yeah. Like, and Ultimates is what? Ultimates 1, Ultimates 2, 3, 4, Ultimate, Ultimates, Ultimate, Ultimate, yeah. Ultimates. You know, just too many. Yeah, you can't even keep track Brian's anymore. Up to now. Yeah. So. Spider-Man is only at, like, Volume three or so, yeah. But then it's hard to say. Are they going back to the well? Yeah, they got the issue two hundred. They got the issue like, two hundred uh, coming out now. It's so, just dumb. Yeah. So did you I see still the, enjoy uh, it. Um, yeah. I don't. I might just get Spider Man simply because I think I think that's the book next to the marquee book. book. But yeah, that's the one I've been getting the longest. So yeah. Oh, well, whatever. We'll see how it goes. Did you see the uh, 
Kevin Smith's going to be writing a new comic there. Batman 66, yeah. Green Hornet. Uh, I, I don't have the biggest love in the world for the Batman 66. Me neither. Yeah. Um, I actually have no interest in this whatsoever. Uh, the, the Alex Ross covers look nice. Uh, they look pretty awesome. They look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I was never a big super fan of uh, Batman 66. It wasn't the first Batman I was introduced to. I mean, no. I've mentioned before on the show, I, uh, I cut my bat teeth on Darkwing Duck. And then graduated, oh and then graduated up. So I, I was more accustomed to the darker Batman. I never had the '60s camp Batman when I was a yeah, youngin. Yeah. So, Darkwing Duck was '60s camp Batman. But it still had the dark edge to it. It was a good balance. Plus, it was awesome. And it wasn't Batman. It was my first Batman. It's not a Batman. It's an introduction. It's a duck with a hat, and no pants. <laughs> but a kick-ass jacket. I don't know. And cape. Uh, Kevin Smith. His Green Hornet run was amazing. Mm. He knows that character. So, I mean, I'd be kind of curious to read it just for that. My, but my... his Batman has not been so stellar. Yeah. Having him pee himself. That's exactly. Like, what's that? Like, yeah. Way to, way to cut the character off. Good job. I know. But uh, the thing that's got me the most interested is it's actually a sequel to an episode. Yeah. Which it is kind of cool. Continues right off. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we'll actually have that Kato beats the crap out of Robin as opposed to a tie. Uh, Robin's quite the man. Batman 66. His pants would speak otherwise. <laughs> or lack of or pants. Or lack of pants and his boots. <laughs> yeah. But no, like, I'm, I love that. Like, when Bruce Lee was on that show, uh, like, uh, Burt Ward's gonna beat you in a fight. Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, but no. Yeah. Like, Burt Ward's terrified that Bruce Lee's gonna kick his ass. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, I like I like that idea. Like we've we've got that trend now of uh you know, relaunching yeah. old T V series in comic book form, but I like this being a direct sequel to an actual episode. They have no likeness rights for the actor that played the badge in, in that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean he'll probably be in a mask or since you're uh, speaking of T V comic book rights or whatever. I remember I mentioned it before, and you were like garbage. I probably much. don't remember. Is uh, six million dollar man? Yeah, I remember garbage six. It actually has some of the most stellar reviews online of any book nowadays. Is that is that nostalgia glasses though? I don't think Let's so. Could it be? How many? Oh, what would it be? Fifty or sixty year old people are going to be reviewing that book. Uh, that that show had. A very big resurgence in the '80s with its toy line, though. Come on, were you buying 70, those toys? I, was I wasn't buying I was, those toys. I was an English kid. From that. So. Like it was in the '70s as well. So I mean, yeah. I think I think maybe a lot of it has. To I do don't with think nostalgia, it's. I don't think it's nostalgia. What about season two of the Six Million Bionic Woman? When is that comic coming out? Don't know. Never. If that's your answer. There was the Bionic Woman comic book, yes, but it wasn't they, a continuation. I think of no, the series. That show was bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you have any more comic news there or what? Nah, slow week. All right. Let's go on to video games. Video games. Uh, Dark Souls 2, 2 came out. Uh, I'm not playing it because I don't want to bust my controllers. Right. Uh, played the first, oh, this Dark, Dark Souls? Yeah, played that. Uh, hated my life while playing it. Because it's so frustratingly difficult. Oh, okay. And, you know, I'm I'm not exactly a babby gamer, but mm. holy crap, was this game hard. So, uh, I probably won't be playing this one for a little while at least. But I have been playing South Park, Stick of Truth. Mm. Just wanted to uh, drop some thoughts on that. Probably the funniest game I've ever played since the first Portal. I saw a screen grab online of... There's no such thing as a bad screen grab from this game. Of someone inserting something into... Randy? Someone's behind. Yeah. There's a mini game where you have it to... It looked disturbing. You have to ward off an alien probing. Maybe that was it. Yeah. 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 But the entire game is its funny. It's well written. The um, the controls are have some very cool combat mechanics. I've got this lot of uh, uh, time button presses during combat. Uh, you have combos and magic attacks and power attacks based off of things that happen in the show. Uh, you actually get to build your South Park character, so hair, skin tone, and everything. Oh, that's cool. You actually equip different pieces of armor to you that change how you look. And mm. even you can get like facial um, uh, features like beards, mustaches, ball chins. Huh. Um, so you can get like uh, evil Cartman goatee, so you can be like a little six-year-old kid with a goatee. My guy's got giant chops at the moment. 
That's fine. And um, you get different weapons, and they all change how you look, different armor pieces. Uh, the classes are amazing. Hmm. You, you pick your, design your guy, then you pick a class. There are four classes. Oh, yeah. I almost don't want to tell or say what they are because I don't want people to listen to this and get it ruined, but it's so damn funny that it's basically worth the price of the game just for the, the class selection screen. Hmm. And the replayability, <clears throat> I have no issue going back through the game and replaying it as all these classes after I'm done. I picked Fighter at the beginning because Fighter's always a good way to go through the first part of the game. I'll give you a little taste of it. You go on the Fighter, and if you pick the character that matches, say, my translucent skin tone... It says, huh, a white fighter. <laughs> Haven't seen one of those in a while. Oh, yeah? Like a boxer fighter. It's yeah. so funny. Huh. And uh, you get a little combat tutorial on that, but all of South Park's mapped out. It looks just like the show. Uh, all the voice actors are do such a great job. Um, you go to type in your name, and it just completely overrides what you put in, so they can refer to you as an insulting nickname. Huh. Uh, you have a ton of supporting characters, you've got range attacks, uh, one of your attacks is a power attack, you walk up to your enemy with a baseball bat and a baseball, throw the baseball up in the air, and then just clock the guy in the face with the bat. But you also have magic attacks with Butters using a hammer like Mjolnir, but it's actually just a claw hammer That's <laughs> to funny. like beat kids and hit them with lightning. So... <laughs> It's it's like their imagination mixed in with the reality of the world that South Park is in. That's cool. The reality of South Park. But it's such a funny game. Uh, it has some control and technical issues. Sometimes movement around can be a little tricky, what you can and can't go yeah, past. Yeah. Some visual glitches here <clears> and there. <throat> I heard about the glitches. People yeah. making a big deal about it. And it's Like freaking out. Yeah. There are far worse issues in video games. If this is a problem... It, who cares? Uh, yeah. The developer who picked it up uh, did a great job seeing that they did Fallout uh, New Vegas and that. <coughs> it's just a fun game. You you yeah. will laugh. Uh, I walked into Tom's Rhinoplasty and Montage was playing. Hmm. So, like, this is great. Did, how'd you like the uh, town map? The, the map how'd is you a like little... seeing it all? Uh, the map is it's cool to see the entire town laid out. Yeah. It's confusing as dicks, though, the friggin' map set up. Really? Like... It's kind of hard to tell where you are at each section mm. in relation to where you need to go. Yeah. So the map setup is a little confusing. Like, there's a little target, but I don't know if that's where I am because there's no legend for it. Uh, and okay. it's actually a rather deep setup. You have skill points, attributes. Uh, you make friends through, like, a Facebook setup. And one of my favorite gags is all the adults are on their cell phones. Mm -hmm. So they have no idea what's going on throughout the course of, the, of their town because they're just obsessed with their smartphones. Yeah. And you add friends and you get more points based upon how many friends you have. And it's just, there's so much, so many layers into the game. It's, it's such an enjoyable game to go through and play. Uh, the, the visuals on the attacks are great. Uh, the animation of the characters are hilarious. There's little things <coughs> you just don't do anything, but they're there because it's a cool part of the world. Yeah. And it's just, it's a fun game. I am certainly not disappointed I picked it up. It's a fantastic game. I've heard nothing game. but good stuff. Yeah. It's it's not the longest game in the world, but I think if it were yeah, any it's long... it's like 36 hours of gameplay. So. I think, yeah, it's something along that, but um, you can probably buzz through it straight line through the main quest. Yeah. But any longer, and it might wear a little thin, so mm -hmm. I think it's a good bouncing act to keep it, you know, not a 50-60 hour RPG. Yeah, how much our South Park could you really yeah. take all in it, a row? It does feel like a big episode of South Park, and it is just a... That's the biggest thing. If you're just looking for a funny game that will make you laugh, this is worth it. Hmm. So definitely check it out. Let's see. Well, well. we got some uh, toy news. It's been uh, not a massive week, but we're still uh, still reeling from all the bombs dropped on us at Toy Fair. Yeah. Uh, DC Collectibles had their Ask DC uh, from March 6th. A couple of cool little bits of news out of there. Uh, people have been wondering, we got the announcement at Toy Fair of the 6-inch uh, uh, animated versions of uh, oh, yeah. DC characters, like the Batman animated series and the New Adventures of Batman. The Batman figure is from New Adventures, so it's kind of Justice League style, mm -hmm. but the Catwoman is from the original Batman animated series. So a lot of people have been wondering, well, okay, what version of Two-Face and Mr. Freeze are we getting? They didn't answer that question, but another question people want to know is, well, since we're getting a new Adventures of Batman, 
are we not going to get a Batman the Animated Series Batman? So if you do one in one style, are we never going to get it in the other? Yeah. And they actually said, no, that's not going to happen. If Just because they release a Batman animated series version doesn't mean they won't do one in New Adventures and vice versa. Yeah. So just because we get a New Adventures doesn't mean we're going to get not going to get a Batman animated series oh, with the their yellow Their figures logo. are a money machine. They're going to oh, do yeah. a million of this, whatever they can. So. This thing, this this line for DC is going to knock it out of the park because it's Batman figures to begin with and those sell like gangbusters and you have the hardcore nostalgia aspect yeah. to it being from beloved animated series. So they're going to sell every figure they can make. Yeah. So, I will be buying probably, yes, all of them. <laughs> a little pricey. <laughs> they're a little, they're, their price point is going to be a little higher than I think than some of the other ones, but mm. it's just really cool. And uh, some other good news coming out of that little talk. Uh, we haven't heard much about any new uh, DC properties outside of their main Batman line or some of the Superman family figures. But with Constantine coming up in the TV series mm. and... They're, they're thinking with that popularity and kind of driving that show, we might actually get some Justice League Dark figures. And that's That'd the first time we've heard any mention of that. Like, we have, we've had Trinity, uh, I'm sorry, we've had um, Pandora, technically part of the Dark Universe, yeah. and we've had Swamp Thing, also part of the Dark Universe. But, I mean, the first mention of getting some JLD figures, like maybe a new Zatanna, Maybe finally a Constantine figure from DC Direct. Yeah. Uh, maybe a new Dead Man, even though your brightest day one is pretty much the exact same figure. We pretty much. He looks the exact same. Yeah. But you know, getting some of these characters, that's a cool indication that maybe the TV show will push the figures, and the figures will be used to push the show. So kind of hoping. I mean, I've been looking forward to some Justice League Dark figures for a, to, for a while. So hopefully, this might be our first step towards that. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Yeah. And uh, this new uh, studio that just formed called Boss Fight Studios has a new prototype figure. They just put their it's first kind of images cool out. Name. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, it's made up of uh, a bunch of uh, former Hasbro guys that worked on Transformers and GI Joe. So hmm. you know they've got some experience in the industry. But what they've put out is like a six-inch scale human-style figure. No licenses, nothing that they've announced yet. But it strike. It almost looks like a shrunk-down version of a Hot Toys figure. Now, the Hot Toys figure has the amazing sculpt likenesses, good articulation, but they're using kind of the best part of that, which is the likeness in the human form, for, and combining it with what a lot of Japanese figures are doing, like the SH figure arts and the Figma figures for the articulation. Oh, yeah. The, the downside to the Hot Toys figures is they usually go for sculpt, limited articulation. The Japanese SH figure arts Figma figures usually have the great articulation, but they're mm -hmm. anime-style characters, so you can get away with having, you know, the joints not really making sense sometimes, but this looks to be a combination of both of them. Yeah. So you have a six-inch scale figure, or maybe a little bigger, that has fantastic articulation, wrist, elbows, double knees, cut joints, everything, but also looks and has a sculpt of a human proportion. Mm -hmm. So if they get some licenses behind it that are interesting to people, these could be a good line of figures. I mean, we're not going to see any superheroes yeah. in this line. How many more licenses can there, there be, really? Well, yeah, I mean, depending upon how there's... I mean, there's licenses for every type of figure. I mean, look at what they've done with Game of Thrones. Like, Dark yeah, Horse has the true. statues, or the statue figures, and then Funko has the action figures. So, I mean, there's, there'll be things out there they'll try and get for this, because they could work really well. Um, they could be Valiant comic versions, like an Exo War figure could work. True. There are no toys of them currently, so that's exactly. a good license. Or uh, even image stuff. Or some image stu stuff. Yeah, I mean, McFarlane's not making any comic figures anymore. Dynamite stuff. Yeah, I mean, the only uh, image figures... Gobots. Some human figures, too. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, there's always movie-like licenses and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's true, too, I guess. So, I mean, it looks good for a prototype figure. The artic you can see the articulation in the joints and everything. It looks really cool. And, you know, you, you sculpt on some pieces to do a license, and it could be a good figure. Hmm. Huh. So, We'll see how it goes. It could be kind of a new trend for North American toy companies to go this route. Usually we get either one or the other when it comes out of uh, figures. This looks to be a nice combination of sculpt and articulation. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hmm. Got uh, some TV <clears throat> movie news for the week. Not a ton. Just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah. Uh, our quote-unquote new Mr. Fantastic, who looks like a very small boy. But, you yeah. know, they're going Ultimate Route, whatever. I've never even heard of this guy outside of uh, that movie he was in with Michael B. Jordan. Oh, yeah. His new, his He's been in a, actually a ton of movies, really? but 
no one's really seen. Yeah, uh, Miles so. Teller uh, did a bit of an interview regarding the uh, his uh, the movie in Fantastic Four. Not a big fan. He's never read the books. Could no. care less about it. So that's always good. He actually said, when I read the script, I didn't feel like I was reading this larger-than-life incredible superhero tale. That's great! I know. That's what I want from a Fantastic Four movie. Now, well, that's the thing, too. Either it's his unfamiliarity with the material, or the script really was bad. Could be either. He, he also went on to say, like, it's just it's a human story about these people who have to become what's known, mm -hmm. I guess, as the Fantastic Four. That's yeah. great. So, and it's also going to be kind of like down to earth and grounded. As yeah, that word. I kind of knew that was going to happen anyway. But I think, oh, I'm going to get into this later. But this is bad. <laughs> this sets it up. This is worse than having 15 year olds play the, the act, the uh, the cast. Yeah. This is terrible. Why? Why? Uh. Like, it doesn't feel like a larger than life superhero film. That's exactly what I want out of my larger than life superhero film. Yeah. So we're going to get into that later. Look forward to that later on in the show. I'm just furious at this. And uh, we've got uh, four actors they announced for uh, uh, up for the running for Doctor Doom, and they mm -hmm. are people I don't know. There's yeah. no name. This has no name draw to this film. They said whatsoever. they were pretty much unknown actors. Yeah. So. I kind of like the idea of them originally for Well, you can sign them to picture deals for cheap. Yes, yeah, that's the reason. That's why they're doing yeah. that. But with the way the movie's going, I don't think they're going to get more than one. Yeah. But uh, the original, there was some rumor going on <clears> that it might have been a female version of Doctor Doom. In the yeah, movie. I heard that. That would have been cool, because look what happened when they made Loki a female in Thor. Yeah. It turned out awesome. It's pretty cool. So that could have been interesting. That could have been a cool draw for the film. Get, mm. like, I don't know, Tilda Sweeten or something to play Doctor Doom. So you got teenage Reed who went to school with Doom who's, like, three Cle times his age. Clearly what could be a time displaced <laughs> older doom. Nah. You can do anything with these characters, but no. No, nah. we're going to do this. And you don't really care about this, but I do. Uh, we got our full Flash costume reveal Ugh, as well. Boring. It's like non-news. It's news. It's, it's not news. It's like we're getting a resurgence of superhero TV shows that are good. I mean, Arrow's still It's just a ass. costume, Gary. Just yeah, but it's from the guys that designed the Arrow costume. There's an Academy Award-winning guy that designed both costumes. Yeah. They're filming the pilot for Flash right now. I don't know why he's not blonde, but whatever. Uh, he's like dark sandy, darkish yeah, hair, which is fine. But the costume looks fantastic. It has yellow boots. We've got like yeah. the uh, yellow bracer for the lightning bolts, mm -hmm. full cowl with the little uh, ear pieces. The logo is nice and centered, looks great. Red center on the logo, which is yeah. weird. I don't know, it, for me, that's the only misstep because it blends too much in with the rest of the costume. The whole concept of a logo on your costume is so they can see it coming. Yeah. So, you know. But you don't know the effects. Maybe the lightning will be all over. Yeah, the exactly. Place, like in a still frame, you don't know how it really acts on film. I like the costume. It's got a cool texture to it, but it's not like little tiny lightning bolts or something that overdone, Brian Zayer. Yeah, yeah. So, I like it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where they go with Flash. I'm still turning my way through Arrow. Mm -hmm. They had that awesome trailer about Arrow for like the mid season thing with, uh, with Slade. Yeah. They don't like his mask, though. Are you you're caught up on Arrow now? Uh, no, I'm still oh, working through season God. one. Oh, my God. I got it at home. Um, probably not doing anything the rest of the day since we've decided to have another round of winter here. So uh, maybe I'll turn back through an arrow. I don't yeah. like Slade's mask. You're saying how awesome Slade Wilson is, and I agree with you because the few minutes in the trailer looks fantastic, but yeah. I don't like his hockey mask. It's the same mask that the Royal Flush Gang had. Uh You'll see it. When you get caught up, you might have a better appreciation for What's it. What's wrong with it being a fabric mask? Uh, or you'll a see. full head mask? You'll see. Uh, true crime, or sorry, not true crime, True Detective ended this week. Have you watched that at all? I have not. Uh, I feel, people have just told me how great it is. I think I'm just going to watch it straight through. Well, yeah, that's the way to watch it. Yeah. You got to So I wanted to wait way. until it was done. Is but it eight is eight episodes? Six, or yeah, eight episodes, okay. sorry. Yeah, it is literally one of the best TV series in, like, at least the last 20 years. It is fantastic. Will I like it more than Breaking Bad? It's possible. I think I do. Whoa! Yeah. Gauntlet. See, Breaking Bad, that took... It was five seasons that took place over the course of a year in his life. Yeah. Right? And it was a good example of, like, decompression. 
interesting storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. Spread it out, space it out. Every angle's, you know, this character, that character. Yeah. Friggin' eight million times Junior eating breakfast and, you know, all that stuff, right? Like, good times. Most Where this was hugely compressed, but it told you everything you needed to know yeah. about every facet of these characters' lives. Perfect writing. It was just utterly amazing. You've got to watch it. Everyone's got to watch it. Are we seeing a lot of Emmy nominations uh, for this show probably coming uh, up? It will probably get all of them. I think McConaughey's going to walk away with an Emmy as well? I th It's probably a pretty darn sure mm -hmm. thing. No Cranston this year, so... There's, there isn't really, so far, any real competition. Well, Spacey. No. You've seen uh, House of Cards. I've seen a couple. I haven't caught up yet. Okay. But, you um, should. You watch that, I'll watch that. Uh, no, no whatsoever competition there. Even Woody Harrelson might be better than friggin' Spacey Ooh, in this show. Gosh. He's pretty good in it, too, actually. Yeah. Like Everyone's that. talking about McConaughey because it's more like a comeback. But Harrelson's always been consistently good. I'm calling it and a he's comeback. Still he still really good. Nice. So definitely a show to look for cool. and watch. It's still like, uh, second season still uh, coming up eventually, right? They're doing uh, yeah different cast. different cast, everything, different cool. story. Different Have they announced everything. any of the actors for the second series? No, well, nothing yet. Not till next year. Yeah, or when it gets at least a lot closer. So. So we have some internet news. Yeah, a little bit interwebs. We got a little bit the webs, the weebs, if you will. It's the South, West, South by Southwest Festival going on, and you have something about that, don't you? Yeah, Comixology had a little bit of an issue with their password management system. People's passwords needed yeah, to be changed. The, and I believe hacked, it was another and... free Marvel bundle pack. Yeah, too, they, was... this is the second time Comixology's had an overabundance <clears throat> of users causing problems with their servers and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, people trying to change passwords, um, couldn't get in. They was they could get in on one device, but not on the other. Yeah. So I mean, you know, not uh, this this stuff does happen, but this kind of goes to show that the infrastructure to support mass consumption of digital comics maybe isn't where the market needs it to be right now. Both uh, both companies both companies are heavy pushing digital. They just it's not need... necessarily the future yeah. of the industry, but they, they need to bulk up on their servers yeah. and more RAM and all that stuff. Because too, they so. they want they want uh, the digital books to kind of run concurrently side by side with their print releases. Mm -hmm. But you know, as it gets more and more popular to do this, we're going to start running into more and more issues, bandwidth issues, server issues, uh, being able to access your content, keep your content, things yeah. like that. So I think this just highlights the problems that exist still with digital comics as a whole. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all right. Yeah. What else uh, we got? Uh, I've, I've been a fan of uh, Zach Galifianakis uh, Between Two Ferns for a Some while. Some of them are quite humorous. Yeah, the Justin Bieber one was really good. You know, uh, yeah. Obama was on there the other, the other day, which I thought was kind of hilarious. And one of the questions that he was asked was, Galifianakis asked him was, how does it feel to be the last black president? <laughs> so that was kind of funny. And Obama's giving it back to him just as hard, like, oh, uh, going he? on about how uh, how great Bradley Cooper is. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, everyone loves Bradley. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. And he goes, uh, are you going to feel sad you can't go for a third term? He's like, no, I don't think that would be a bad thing at all. I mean, you don't want to do thir thirds of things. I mean, I'd be like making a third Hangover movie. That didn't really work out too well, did it? <laughs> So it was, yeah. it was kind of funny. Hmm. Uh, and uh, they were talking about the healthcare.gov site, and Gallup oh, Max was yeah. like, oh, I knew it. you were here to plug something. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> he's going on about, yeah, why would you have the guy that made the Zoom design your website? <laughs> <laughs> I know, eh? So it was uh, it was rather enjoyable. It was a funny little set piece for uh, Galifianakis in Between Two Ferns. It was kind of funny. Yeah. He's I, pretty gold most of the yeah. time. I enjoyed that. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite sites on the internet is um, Screen Junkies uh, Honest Trailers. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy just taking. They take trailers and just kind of rip fun and poke it, have fun at it for the entire length of the trailer. And uh, they started doing a video game version now. So yeah. uh, they did a Mario Kart one. It was kind of funny, just talking about the blue turtle shell being the ruiner of friendships yeah. for decades and decades and hell. You know, they keep inventing these cool little mechanics and then drop them from game to game. Mm -hmm. Like, buddy weird. racing. Nope. Gone. Yeah. So, but you're still going to buy it anyway. Pretty yeah. much is the punchline of the gag, so it's kind of cool. 
And uh, for those of you who are Metal Gear Solid fans, there's a subreddit uh, going on now of uh, the complete story of Metal Gear. It's kind of going cool. all the way back to uh, the creation of uh, the Patriots, all the way up to kind of where we are now with mm-hmm. Metal Gear. No, uh, it's, it's worth a good read. I mean, there's some cool. I think there's <clears> a little <throat> bit sitting there like you haven't played all the games. Uh, might kind of backfill you in, especially with Ground Zeroes coming out soon. So it'd be an interesting read for even if you just wanted to read something. Yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, it's a messed up timeline and a messed up oh, story. Oh, is it? Because yeah. Kojima's a good writer, but mm. doesn't exactly have, let's say, breaks on his oh, writing. Okay. He just goes, <clears throat> and yeah. whatever pops in his head, sure, let's just go with it. Yeah, why not throw that in there? Yeah, throw that in there. Sure, let's do that. That's cool. Yeah, kind of an interesting little read. So I, I suggest checking it out. Hmm. All right. I believe you were feeling a little anger. I'm feeling. A little, I got a little bit of rants. <clears throat> what would it be about? A little bit of rant today. In the pants? Would it be that thing you kept alluding to earlier? It is. Um, grim, gritty, down to earth comic book, movie, fantasy films, any kind of adventure movie that aims to be down and grounded and gritty and reality based. Actually, I don't even remember what we were trying to talk about. <laughs> that was it. That was it. About the Fantastic Four movie. Ah, oh, fantastic. How movie. it's yeah. got to be. It's grounded in reality and all that. You know what? Why? Why not? Avengers has shown that you can get away with do the fantastical. You can look at Thor, Space Vikings. True. Wasn't this your thing last week as well? Nope. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to the show. <laughs> I talk enough on the show. I do remember this whole Thor bit, though. It's, I've used it to bring up this point a few times, I believe. Yeah, but I holy so crap! Like the Fantastic Four is the. This is my problem with uh, Miller when he did, um, or Miller when he did Fantastic Four, having it gritty and reality based. Surprisingly, and... I didn't mind his take Ugh. too much. But it's supposed to be big, out there, big idea, fantastical stuff. Well, yeah, that's what why, the Fantastic Four is. Why? Of all, yeah, it's in the goddamn title. <laughs> It's the world's greatest uh, comic magazine. Yeah, the fantastic part. Yeah. So of all of them, mm-hmm. why is this not the family in a soup-top bathtub flying through space, going into the negative zone? Why is it you could do the human drama with that? That's what keeps the fantastic part ra- grounded in reality, not the, oh, it's rooted in baseline human drama. The human drama part of the story balances out the fantastic part. Yeah. If you just have the down-to-earth family drama set against with, like, you know, some explosions and a guy in a green cape, why even bother making the Fantastic Four movie? Mm -hmm. It defeats the purpose. Hard to say. We we don't know what the finished product is going to look like yet. It's not shaping up to be very good. Yeah, I'm fully expecting the Fantastic Four to be destined to become the Fantastic Four. Just like Spider-Man mm. is genetically destined to become Spider-Man, which defeats the purpose of the character. Mm. Well. Hmm. <laughs> you do not share my uh, anger. Not really. I'll wait and see what it's like first. I can't take three bad Fantastic Four movies. What are you talking about? Three of them were great. Roger Corman, and then the other two from, you know, like a Exactly, ago. hence I can't take three if those other two are still bad, and they are. And those other two are amazing. Except they had a bad... Johnny Storm is the only thing that's watchable in all He three was good. Them. I liked Reed, and I liked Invisible Woman. I didn't like care for Ben or Doom, though. Doom on the, the uh, surfboard with the cosmic, uh, with the power cosmic and the cyclone was actually kind of, fun, kind of cool to see. <laughs> but, you know, not grounded in reality, because we had a Silver dude on a surfboard. It was Even grounded t- in reality. They were having a wedding. They had family troubles. Yeah, but we also had silver naked guy on a surfboard. Whatever. So, like, even Tim's story managed to figure out that part of the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. And he made Barbershop. Had Galactus in the clouds. Mm. Cloud okay. Galactus. He dropped the ball there on many other things in that movie. <laughs> but he still had... A fantastical side to them, and it just seems like they're not pushing that. Uh, and I have concerns. You need... They're not pushing it yet. There could be rewrites. <laughs> there could be. That'll work. Yeah, That's yeah, always good. Know. Rewrites after casting and filming begins. That'll work out well. Hey, they did it for, uh, what was it? That X-Men movie there, the last one. 
Future Past? No, not Future Past. First Class? First Class. They did uh, rewrites on that? Yeah, they did. Hmm. They did reshoots, but... Yeah. Different things. Yeah. But yeah, my, my concern over this FF movie is growing every time someone opens their mouth about it. Yeah. They every time we get a should be a gag number. order or something on that yeah. set. Just and let it be what it's going to end up being. Yeah. And then have it be bad, and then reboot it again in a few years. <laughs> Fourth time's the let, charm. Let Marvel have the rights. That would solve it. Give yeah. them back the rights because to the they, show. they understand how to do it. Could you imagine how amazing that would be, having the Fantastic Four in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Mm -hmm. Because we've already got it set up that there is some crazy-ass shit going on in the Marvel Universe. True enough. So, big guy in a helmet flying around in a spaceship? Done. Doing it. Yep. And do we Maybe need Doom need. again? Uh, Well, he's kind of like their marquee villain. That's we, the second time the show so I mentioned was... marquee as well. The word marquee. Yeah. That's so, four. so was the Joker. They kept him for Batman 2. Yeah, which I hated. I thought that was amazing. Why not use a Nihilus? There's a cool character. True. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, pull out Puppet Master. <laughs> Puppet Master would be awesome. Or no the one. Wizard. Actually, I do like Fenley. Yeah. I do like him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, maybe hold Doom off until you inevitably get the contract required sequel in order to maintain your rights. Mm -hmm. Give us a Nihilus first. At least if it fails miserably, we got a Nihilus on film. Yeah, that's true. I think they're going to save him for the Avengers movies, though. They can't. They don't have him. They don't? Are you sure? Yeah, he's under the uh, hmm. FF banner. Same as, uh, what, the Scrolls, Galactus. Oh, okay. Uh, I think Namor is a split, right? I, oh, maybe he is with Fox. Yeah, I think he's with Fox. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. So that's it. That's my anger. It'll only grow more and more as we see stuff like costume I think it's a little and... unwarranted at this point in time. With the information we have, I believe it's totally justified. I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah. if you see a trailer, oh, that's, I can't a, wait like, for that. that's a little different. Like the Transformers 4 trailer. That masterpiece. Mm, cinematic glory. That's right. So, ending on that down note. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, folks. I'm going to go have a uh, beer. Ah, no. I don't know. I think it was a pretty good show today. Talked about, uh, what, a couple new books from Marvel. Number ones, number ones, number That's ones. That's right. A couple trades. We had a, I was going to say power panel. Brow Razor. Brow Razor. It's great That's that you know right. the segments of your own show. <laughs> it's only been like a year. <laughs> Not since you changed I it. Know. So there. So there. Uh, some video game news. South Park fans will enjoy. Go buy that game. Yeah. Just, just buy it. I've heard it's fantastic. You, you don't need me telling you it's fun, but it's fun. Go buy it. Yeah. A little what? Toy news, internet news, all oh, yeah. a whole bunch of little stuffs. All the things you come to love and expect from your golden god hero, Jeff, and his pale sidekick. <laughs> I'm glad his you... translucent man boy. <laughs> I'm glad you finally see the truth of things. <laughs> my eyes have been opened. The you new... are my Burt Ward. The new dawn has come. <laughs> oh, man. You should be in Batman 66. <laughs> Oh, Translucent my... Boy, their new villain. <laughs> that would be awesome. Blind you with the power of his <laughs> pale white skin. Oh, God. Oh, well. Okay, so on that point, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to see you there. In fact, someone left Gary a message last week. Did you see it? Nope. They said you should check out their Titanfall video footage. That was Brad. Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, coincidentally, you know this person. I do. So yeah, we have a small but dedicated fan base. <laughs> so uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Find us on Facebook, Pendulum on Facebook. Gary's at the Wagnerock.wordpress.com. You can find his latest article to catch a predator on there. I'm pretty proud of that title. It's it's pretty awesome actually. Yeah. And we're also maybe running a contest coming up soon for an autographed photo of a member of the cast of X Men: Days of Future Past. Really. And I'm, I'm not actually lying. That's a real thing. <laughs> I'm on this. Thanks for your long pause of non-belief. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know anything about this. <laughs> I've only mentioned it to you before. I have no memory. That's true. 
<laughs> you don't remember? You don't recall? No. Got no memory of anything <laughs> at all? I'm not singing it. You can't sue us. I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, good. Yeah. Says the music guy. Why? Right, who sings it? Gabriel. Who knows that guy anymore? Come on. Unless I'm 60 years old, I'm not going to know that song, Gary. Or you're Gary. A fool. Or if I'm Gary. Peter Gabriel's amazing. Whatever. Better than whatever the hell band you were talking Hammer. about. <laughs> He's only got one song. He has one like song. 900 songs, and they're all great. Alright. This will be a subject for another day. I'm on uh, the TelltaleMind.com where you can find current and better music than that from the last. 50 years ago, whatever. <laughs> as well as many other things. You find Gary on Twitter, the Wagner Rock. I'm on the Twitter. I was going to say it was on, I was on the Wagner <laughs> I'm, the yep. I'm the Telltale Mind on Twitter. <laughs> I am not on the Wagner <laughs> We can cut around that, right? Yeah, I'll leave it all in. All right. And, uh, said. yeah... So that's uh, pretty much it for this week. Next so, uh, week, lots of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, coming up right now, it's going to sound like the end of the show, but 